Peace and blessings, guys. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back with another video. This one's going to be about seven things Christians must stop doing. And before I even start this video, I already understand that people have already made up their mind that they're not going to try to change. They're not going to try to re uh, unlearn and relearn. Uh, they're not going to humble themselves, admit that they're wrong, admit their error so they could grow. Because best believe it, guys, if you believe, if you're not trying to unlearn and relearn, reprogram your mind, from the lies that they taught us in the mainstream society or whether the media these churches okay not saying all churches but most of these churches if you're not willing to do that you'll never grow spiritually you will never grow spiritually so i want to i like i said guys i understand before i even start this video some people they're going to watch this i'm everything i'm going over scripture to back it up but people don't they don't care so you know for those who the small ramit who's been practicing in this air uh, it's all and, and i'm not using this to cast a stone on no one this is all edification this video is gonna be a classic let's get let's go Okay, the seven things Christians must stop doing. Number one is praying in public and praying to be seen. I had someone left a comment. This inspired me to make this video, by the way. Someone left a comment a couple of days ago in my video saying, Mark, <laughs> he said, Mark, I thought you were righteous. Why don't you pray before your videos? And it really hit me because it's like, dang, people really don't read the Bible. People just watch YouTube videos. They go to church on Sundays. Uh, they say a, couple, uh, say a couple prayers. Their pastor tells them that they're saved, and that's it. You know, they don't have to put in any works because there's a huge deception telling people that you don't have to do no works. You're saved by grace, and we are saved by grace, but the Bible says faith without works is dead. Okay, so I'm, th I'm thinking that's what pe most people are just doing, guys. Going to church on Sundays, saying a couple of prayers, the sinner's prayers, and they're not trying to really put in any works, you know, to build up the spirit. They're not trying to study the scriptures and stuff and prove. They're just putting their trust in man. And like I told you guys, you don't want to be a sleeping sheep. You don't want to be a sleeping sheep, guys. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. Okay, this is Jesus speaking, saying, Also, when you pray, you must be like, must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corner of the streets, that they may be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have the reward in full already. I'm going to explain this verse in a bit. But when you pray, go into your most private room and close in the door. Pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. And when you pray, do not heap up uh, phrases, multiple words, or repeating the same over and over as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their much speaking. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Okay, so, so Jesus says that the people who pray to be seen, they already have their reward. The reward is not from God, so the reward is from people. Oh, He's righteous. Oh, He's holy. You know, I got up the comment saying, Mark, I thought you were righteous. You're supposed to pray. So if I were to be praying on my videos, people would think that I'm righteous, even though I could be living like, not saying I'm, I am, but I could in, uh, in outside the YouTube screen, I could be living the complete opposite. But if I go on the YouTube and that just shows you that many people could be easily deceived by these wolves because they could get on here and speak in tongues, which I'm going to go over that in a different video. Um, they could go over here and say the Lord, glory to God, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is all glory to Jesus, you know, and they give you those scare speeches, and that's how people get deceived. Okay, so Jesus is clearly telling us that when people do that, pray, you know, on YouTube, pray in, in the streets, pray to be seen by other people, that is a reward. The reward is not from God. Okay, and see when Jesus says when you pray, it's supposed to be in private, it's supposed to be in secret, so God rewards you openly. Okay, so it also says that when you pray, you don't want to repeat the same things over and over again. For the Gentiles do that. So you want to, when you pray, God already knows what you, what you what you're gonna ask Him before you know you ask. Okay, so once you say a prayer, God, please um, whatever whatever prayer whatever prayer it is, right? You don't have to keep on saying it over and over again. God has already heard you the first time. Okay, so I gotta make that very clear, guys. I'm not gonna be praying on a YouTube video. You'll never see that. You'll never see. You'll never see that. That's 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 something. I'm gonna go with number two. Let's talk about number two. All right, number two. I've been seeing this a lot too, guys. Bragging about fasting and telling others about your uh, you fasting. Okay, Bra the Bible says. Before I go over, um, before I go over, I'm gonna say this is in Matthew chapter six, verse sixteen to eighteen. Remember everything I'm saying. I'm backing up with the Bible, and even then, people don't care. People won't care. Because they have itching ears, they want they want teachers who can tell them what they want to hear. Okay, this is the signs of the times. These are the last days. Okay, uh, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad face, for they disfigure their face that they may appear unto man to fast. Verily I, I say unto you, they have the reward. But when that when thou wast fast and anoint thy head and wash thy face, that that thou appear not unto man to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. So this is pretty much talking about how 
you know, when you fast, it, it's, oh, oops, I don't want my laptop to drop, my fault. When you fast, it is not supposed to be deceived by other people. Oh, he's righteous. He's fasting. Oh, he's holy. It's supposed to be to God. It's supposed to be in the private. No one will ever know when I'm fasting. No one will ever know when I'm praying. That's between me and God. And that's, none, that's no one's business. Okay. Even when you're praying, when you're fasting, that is no one's business. Now, if someone tells you, let's say if you're at a family dinner, let's say if you're like in high school, you're young, right? And you tell uh, your parents are telling, you know, you know, so-and-so, why don't you want to eat? And you, then you could tell them, yeah, you know, I'm fasting. I'm not trying to do it. You know, but you bragging, you bragging to other people, you know, and to try to appear holy, to appear righteous. And then you get, you know, you're looking like you're like, you know, you're suffering and stuff like that. God is not God. Your reward is by other by other people. Oh, he's righteous. He's holy. You know, and see one thing about gaining the reward by people is fake because these people are the same people who praise you one season and the next season you're an enemy. They're going through spiritual warfare. The devil's using them. You know, they, they're getting weak. The, the devil deceives them. And now they think you're false. They think you're fake. I know how it works. I understand. So that's why you should only be wanting to get your praise, your glory, or your honor from the most high God. Okay. So number three is, man, these Christians, guys, some of these Christians, they just refuse to give this up. They, they refuse to give it up, man. Number three is using and wearing graven images. Okay. So yes, that, that cross, you know, people even told me, Mark, why don't you have a cross on? That is a graven image, okay? And it's crazy, guys, because I was in Mexico a couple of days ago, and I went into a Catholic church. Now, I know this is a Catholic church, and one thing I noticed, uh, the only reason why I went to that church, guys, is because I wanted to see, like, you know, what is it, what, what's going on, you know? And I walked inside, and I saw people praying, bowing down to statues, praying to the statues, and it's just like, oh, oh, man, you know? It's heavy. All these religions are all linked to an idol, okay? Now, people might be saying, well, Mark, what, what do you mean? The, the Bible talks about the cross. Yes, the cross is picking up your, your you know, going through your burdens, uh, the things that come with uh, being a follower of Christ, you know, going through your hate, going through, going through the hate, going through the betrayal, going through family members, friends switching up, uh, having to deny your flesh, getting hated by the world, okay, because they hated him first. That is what picking up your cross is, not just you wearing a physical object, a cross, okay? This is Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 15. Cursed be the man that make any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of man's hands, of the craftsmen, and put it in a secret place, and all the people shall, an shall answer and say, Amen. So, if the people who make them are cursed, who are the people who are wearing them? What does that make them? Okay, the Bible says that's an abomination. Okay, and I want to read this verse, because you have people saying, you know, teaching other people, and it's just, that's dangerous to teach this people. You know, saying that the law is done away with. That's very dangerous to tell people this. And see, I understand because this is why it's important to read the Bible, guys. It makes This makes perfect sense. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is an enemy against God, for it is not subject into the law of God, neither indeed can be. Okay, so the carnal mind, they're not subject to God's laws. They're not subject to his commandments, okay? Because the carnal mind is an enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Okay, so... I understand because people are already made up their mind that they're going to wear the cross. So, you know, they're, they're going to want to appear holy and righteous to people. You know, if I would wear the cross, people would be like, oh, he's, he's a Christian. Nah, you would know I'm a Christian by my fruits, not because I wore a chain on my neck. <laughs> like, come on, man. It, 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 it's, it's sad. But like I said at the beginning of this video, people have already made up in their mind that they're going to do what they're going to do. And there's going to be a few people who the seed gets planted in and they're going to change. And all praises the most high for that. Okay, all praises. So number four is uh, and guys i fell into the snare i when god first called me and the reason why i fell into this i'm gonna this okay so being self-righteous and holier than now the reason why i fell into that snare is because all my friends hated me because i gave my life to christ and i started learning about the bible and it made me starting to feel like i'm better than other people because because like let's say like i, I even the bible says that knowledge puffs up okay knowledge puffs up and that's exactly what it did to me and i became self-righteous and, you know, and I was holier than now. And the Bible says that there is no man on earth that does good and, and sins not. So everybody on earth, okay, that, is, that doesn't just apply to, to me. It goes to anybody on earth. There's not one just man on earth that does good and sin not. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that we must be humble. That, mu that must mean that, you know, when we, when we think that we're better than other people, we're self-righteous, that is pride. Okay, pride comes before the fall. And even the Bible says that, in uh, Galatians chapter 7, verse 16, it says, uh, Be not over-righteous. Why destroy yourself? 
Okay? Be not much over righteous. And see, people with the religious spirit, they, they battle with self righteousness. They battle with the holier than thou. They battle with, you know, being hypocrites, praying in public, you know, bragging about fasting, telling other, other people about their fasting. They battle that. Okay? They, ba they battle that. So I'm going to let you guys know. Being self-righteous is be humble. You don't have to be better. You don't have to feel that way. Remember, the Bible says knowledge puffs up. Be humble and never feel like you're better than anybody else because God can humble you in a minute, okay? You don't, you don't want to be operating in pride and arrogancy, man, because remember, pride comes before the fall. Number five is using the lowercase g in God. Yes, guys. I see a lot of people do this, and it's okay if you, you've done it. This is just to let you guys know, okay? This is in Deuteronomy chapter 20, 32, verse 16, Okay? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. And see, when it says strange gods, it's with the lowercase g, okay? And even the Bible calls Satan a god. I'm going to go over in a little bit, okay? So they provoked him uh, to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations. They provoked him to anger, okay? They sacrificed unto devils and not unto God. And then see, this is capital G. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods who, that came up newly, whom your fathers feared not, okay? So... The lowercase God. Now, let's talk about the Bible says Satan is a God, okay? Because people worship Satan. People sell their soul to Satan. People bow down and pray to Satan, okay? So that would make him, I mean, now he's not the most high God, you know, but that to some people, that's he has, he's their God, okay? So this is 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verse uh, 3 to 4. So it says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, okay? In whom the God of this world, this is the lowercase G, this is talking about Satan, in whom the God of this world, the devil, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, at least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Okay, so yes, guys, when you use God, when you type in the text, make sure you're using the capital G because the lowercase g can be linked to other gods, other strange gods, okay, other idol gods. Uh, number six is choosing their feelings and emotions over God's truth. Just like in this video, a lot of people are going to choose their feelings or emotions, even though everything I said backed up with the Bible, but they're going to, they're going to, so, Christians, it's the spirit of error. That's what it is, okay? That you're going to choose their feelings or emotions, okay, over God's truth. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 4, let God be true and every man a liar. So what does that mean? It means that that person's not backing up with the Bible. He's a liar, okay? He's a liar, okay? So choosing their, this is what a lot of Christians do. They, they choose their feelings and emotions because it goes against their programming, okay? Their false programming for the years of uh, whatever, whoever was teaching them or whatever the media the, the, I mean, guys, we, we, we were getting uh, brainwashed since uh, elementary school. They've been brainwashing us. So we, that's why I said, guys, in the beginning of this video, we must unlearn and relearn. We must humble ourselves and realize, okay, we were taught wrong, and we must now relearn. A lot of people are not able to be doing that because they're not humble. You know, they're self-righteous and they're holier than thou. Okay, they can't be retaught. Okay, number seven is fruitless debates, casting pearls on the swine. You see this a lot especially on social media you know if someone makes a video about you in a positive way it gets no views if someone makes a video about you speaking down on you you know talking you know talking crazy on you right that gets more views because that's it you know one thing i noticed about what god is what god has shown me the reason why these people do this is because god did not anoint them to be a teacher god did not anoint them to preach to be a messenger so the only thing the only content they could come up with is talking about celebrities talking about the, the next man that's the only thing they could do to make content so i want to let you guys know Never engage in fruitless debates. Let's say if you have a family member, right? Your family member is, is making fun of you, laughing at you, scoffing at you because you believe in Jesus and you're trying to you know, plant the seed in them and they're not receiving it. That's why the Bible says, you know, don't cast your pearls in the swine. The only thing you could do for that person is pray for them. That's all you could do. Okay, you, if, if you see that person not being able to receive the word, that's why Jesus, he, he instructed us. He told us, us Christians, us true followers of Christ, don't do that. Don't engage in fruitless debates, okay? Even the Bible says that in Romans chapter 1, verse 28 to 32, that the reprobate mind, it feeds off debates, okay? It feeds off the carnal mind, the reprobate mind, it feeds off debating, going back and forth. And see, what's the point of debating someone if they're not willing to be humble themselves and admit they're wrong? It's a waste of time. It is a complete waste of time, guys. So, yes, I, I recommend everyone who wants to learn about that scripture, about debating, Romans chapter 1, verse 28 to 32. It's a long verse. I probably can't leave it on the screen. But yeah, guys, I hope, so let's, let's go over it real quick. Seven things that Christians must stop doing. Number one, praying in public to be or to be seen. Number two is bragging about fasting and telling others about your fast. Number three is using or wearing graven images. Number four is being self-righteous, holier than thou. Number five is using the lowercase g in God. Number six is choosing their feelings and emotions 
over God's truth, uh, over the Bible. And then number seven is fruitless debates and casting your pearls on the swine. I hope you guys learned something in this video. If you have already, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below if I'm forgetting anything. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.